Um, and so um, let's go to the next slide. I'll walk, I'll walk our audience through some of the concepts of and experiences that we have implemented and what lessons learned we got. The idea and purpose of my presentation is to stir some creative juices in our audience's mind and think out of the box and how uh, continuous learning, AI and machine learning uh, can be implemented uh, as part of uh, FBNA. So as you know, the conventional FBNA cycle is pretty linear, it's, um, it's repetitive, and as Hans communicated before, um, a significant amount of time is spent in um, preparing and updating those forecasts. What, what you can do with respect to continuous planning is you can get rid of that human factor, or at least you can reduce that human factor, remove the bias, and use the forecast for better purposes Go looking ahead. Next slide. So um, once again, how did we approach continuous planning as part of our organization? We picked up a basic rule, you know, we did not try to uh, automate or implement co concepts of AI throughout the planning process. We picked up the big processes, the major items, and that's where we made small tweaks. And I'll give you some examples ahead of what those tweaks could be. And through that process, we made a uh, what I call a continuous loop planning cycle with less and less human intervention making it more uh, agile as well as um, based on forward-looking information rather than analysis of the historical reasons. Going to the next slide. So here's some examples of um, continuous planning and the implementation within our organization. Once again, the purpose of these examples is to stir some juices in your mind and you know, creative uses to make sure that how can you utilize them in your organization. Um, we have a process, of course, like any other organization where you uh, use purchase orders um, and sign new contracts. In a typical uh, planning cycle, the price of a product is changed every quarter or once a year, once uh, the, the team goes in and changes it uh, manually. Uh, through our process, we created a loop where whenever a purchase order is signed or a new contract is signed, that feeds directly into the plan and the plan is updated. So you see here, it's a very small step, but it takes our human intervention and makes the plan more agile. Similarly, on the labor side, you know, you've got people going on vacations. Sometimes people are leaving the organization and joining. That creates some gaps in your labor availability in the organization. Once again, we created a loop there whereby um, the, the, the planning of headcount directly feeds into the, uh, into the uh, plan as well, and the, and the labor availability uh, is updated in the plan automatically. A few more examples on the next slide. On the maintenance side, um, we once, once again, approach some very uh, economical wear sensors and uh, telematics that we installed on our vehicles. Um, what happens with these, these monitor the availability, the utilization of those vehicles. But the planning part really came in whereby we took averages of those consumptions. And if the average for the, say, for the past two months is more than 5% of our current assumption in the plan, by default, the plan updates. So here you once again created a loop whereby you're using smart technology and algorithms to update your plan without human intervention. Um, and this, this makes your plan more agile as well. Similarly, CapEx, uh, a lot of organizations uh, are, are delayed in their CapEx, sometimes internal issues, sometimes logistical issues. So once again, the logistical issue in terms of time delays can be linked. Uh, and we did this as part of the loop in our planning process as well. So our CapEx spend, the timing of that, it just automatically based on the delays in logistics. Next slide, we'll review um, 
what were the critical success factors and how did we implement those as part of our um, journey, which is still continuing. First of all, you need to make sure you're in a very strong cloud-based computing platform. Of course, uh, most of the organizations these days are, but that really enables you to implement more of these concepts that I've talked about. You need to make sure your financial statement close process is condensed, at least on a monthly basis and to a certain extent on a quarterly basis as well. You can go through a longer process for close at the end of the year, but those internal processes should be more agile so that it enables a, a smoother transition to AI and machine learning technologies. Data digitization, and some of our uh, panelists are gonna talk more about it, data digitization is key to the success of AI and machine learning. And there's so many organizations which have not achieved this step, it's surprising. So make sure you can digitize as much data as you can. And then once you've done the first two steps of this journey, the last one is where you can then make it more mature, you can uh, go towards uh, automation, further automation, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. So um, what were the challenges we faced through our um, uh, implementation journey? I think the first one was mindset. A lot of people think that if their organization is currently where it is, the journey to AI and machine learning is a big jump. And what we've seen, we've seen small steps taken every day, small process modifications towards AI every day will accumulate to a much bigger change. So you have to really look at this as small steps over a continuum of change. You have to make sure you make your organization less bureaucratic in terms of approval. So you have to agree the parameters with the board. And similarly, you can then once again go towards a more mature pattern recognition, scenario simulations, and make your uh, AI more robust ahead. 